Hi folks, Tracy here with Scrappy's Rustics. Today we are going to make my signature Scrappy bow. I absolutely love this bow. It's really the only bow I make or go to. I just love it. What you need is a bunch of uh, fabric of your choice. It can be an old pillowcase, it could be curtains, it could be sheets, you can uh, tea dye it, you can coffee dye it to make it, you know, not so white. Um, we got a little mixture of everything here. We have some muslin. Muslin is an awesome filler. I use that often and it rips and threads and shreds real nice. So this piece now is our center piece that you're going to see on the bow. I'm taping the ends because when you go to tie the entire bow together, the knot that you need to tighten gets lost. So by putting the blue painter's tape on the end, you can find it. So depending on the size of your bow that you wanna make, you're gonna fold it in fourths. You could probably do this any way you want. This is the way that I, end up, I ended up just doing it and it worked for me. I tried to follow someone else that did something similar and I just wasn't getting it and it wasn't coming out right. So I kind of just folded it together one night and it worked and that's how I've been doing it ever since. So we dubbed this the Scrappy Bow. I just love it. It's so, it's just me. It's shabby, it's chic, it's farmy house. It, it's all the things. That there is Sari Silk. You can buy a bundle of it on Amazon. I forget how much the price is. But they sew all the scraps of silk together in one continuous strand. So every once in a while you'll get a, 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 a an area where they're sewn together and it's kind of chunky. I usually just clip them off. No big deal. I got the package of the uh, cream and white. They have them where they come in colors and all that. This is just some uh, lace fabric. Uh, it came white. I did half of it. I ripped it up and I did half of it. I tea stained it. I just used like, um, I think it was like three bags of black tea, boiled my water, put the tea bags in there and just dunked the uh, fabric in there. Took it out, wrung it out and uh, let it dry and I rinsed it. And uh, yeah, it's the perfect, perfect color. But you could coffee dye it. You could, you could dye it colors if that's what you're looking for. So we're just, uh, nothing special we're just stacking each piece of fabric on top of one another but kind of offsetting each other we don't want like a perfect pile and all the strands are about the same length um, but not exactly because nothing in a shabby bow is perfect so you just want to kind of offset each stack and, and mix up your colors a little in this case it was white in the cream so you know i didn't do all white and then all cream so now we are taking our first piece that we laid down, which is the center of our bow, and we're gonna tie it, but we're gonna tie it loosely. So that way if we're off center, or it just doesn't look right, there's been many a times where it just did not fall right. And I took it all apart and I did it again, and then it, it went the way I wanted it to. Of course, in this case, we all wish we had that third arm to help us out to tighten it. This video is actually from um, my Roku, Roku and Amazon uh, Fire episode. So I sped it up. It's a lot longer on Roku. But I just love this bow. I think everybody should make one. Now you see how it's a little off center. So by keeping that uh, tied loosely, you can make your adjustments before you're, you're happy with it. And give it a tight tie when you're when you're good to go. So this is a, a fairly sized decent bow. I'd say medium. So I have all the same fabrics for my tail. Usually within my tail, <clears throat> excuse me, I sometimes put in extra, like if I have some pearls or extra pretty type of fabric, I'll put that in my tail. So I'll have everything that's in my bow but I might add something extra to it to zhuzh it up a bit. I like to use like the muslin or the, the fabric that isn't all that, you know, to fill it to fill it in. So that way you don't have to use as much lace or as much as your pretty stuff. 
So as you can see, I just li laid all my uh, fabric down and I grabbed it in the middle and that we flipped our bow over and we're gonna lay the center of that, uh, the strips right in the center of our bow. Again, give it, a, give it a tie, but not a real tight tie. So that way you can twist it and get it the way you want it. And this is where your tails get lost. This is the moment <laughs> when you get everything perfect and you're ready to tighten it up and you can't find your tails. So this blue painter's tape was an absolute savior. Yep, there they are. One of our viewers uh, recommended that and it was brilliant. So I do it every single time now. So I got it where I want it. We're gonna commit, tie it down tight. You can also leave those, um, those tabs on because um, if you wanted to tie your bow around something, um, those are the, usually the best ones to tie just because of the position that they're in. And I forgot to put the little cute pearls in it, but that's okay, it still came out beautiful. And now for our embellishment, and you could do a variety of things, of course. I use the solo wood flower. All my bows kind of look alike, <laughs> just maybe a little bit of different colors, but it's kind of my signature bow. I, of course, did not invent this, but I just love it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this inspires you, and I hope that you make yourself a scrappy bow. Now I find when um, you're laying your bow down, sometimes it just doesn't fall right. So if you put it on a board or something, it kind of helps it all flow and hang correctly. In this case, I put the tack a little bit too high, so it still looked a little wonky. But if you're not sure about it, put it up on something and uh, it, everything kind of falls better. Hope you enjoyed the video.